Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the Bevy game engine. Now if you've never heard of it before, Bevy is an open source game engine for the Rust programming language. You can see it running right now, and notice how the lights are interacting as we go between the light source and the stained glass window. Uh, that is the new um, shader blending functionality that was added in this particular release. There is a lot in this release. Now it is Bevy 0.10, makes it sound very early on, that's why I don't like this numbering game. Uh, but just so you know, the last release was 0.9, so this is a quite mature game engine, and if I ever get around to actually learning to use the Rust programming language, it's going to probably be Bevy that I use. A lot of the Rust stuff I've encountered has just been so over-engineered and hard to understand. I, I find Bevy kind of gets away from that approach. So let's go jump in, take a look at what is new in Bevy 0.10. So Bevy itself, first a quick overview, it is open source data-driven game engine. So there's a lot of systems in place like ECS or Entity Component System, and then you got scheduling systems for handling all your game objects, etc. So all of the logic of your game is handled internally. There was a lot of changes in this actual release around their scheduling system. Uh, so it organizes all those things for you. It comes with a 2D renderer, a 3D renderer. There is Vulkan, and in this release, there is now an OpenGL fallback if you're running on non-supported hardware. Uh, there is custom render pipeline support using a graph structure. It is available on Windows, Mac, Linux, and web with Android and iOS in the works. There is a full UI layering system here. There is a, a leveling loading system, including hot reload. Uh, so this should make especially being data-driven, the tooling support. So if you want to turn, say, Blender into a level editor, uh, the scenes functionality and the data-driven aspect should make it uh, pretty easy to create your own tooling on top of Bevy. There is no level editor per se. If you're looking for that and you're working in Rust, you can either want to use either the Rust extensions for the Godot language or the uh, Rage 3D engine, which is now called Firox. And so if you're more about the tooling, those are ones you want to check out. But it does have all the functionality in place for it. So asset type, hot reloading, etc. are all in here. Fast compile times, and this is a free and open source. So now we're back to Bevy 0.0. Uh, one zero release. Again, this comes after 0 0.9. I don't like that releasing thing because it does make the 0 0.1 release seem very uh, nascent or early, and that's not a good approach because this is actually a quite mature game engine. So at the heart of things that we've seen changed, and I'm not going to get into the weeds on this. First off, there's a lot to this release, and second, because it's really detail-oriented stuff, but they've done a lot of things on their scheduling system for the ECS. Scheduling is pretty straightforward. It's when your game needs to do A before B, or B before A, or A and then B, and then C, very common stuff to have happen in games. Well, ECS scheduling handles all that. So a single unified schedule in place, uh, you can add systems in, and so on. Again, I'm not going to get into the scheduling V3 changes. Uh, I will link the release notes down below, but there was a lot of changes to the underlying scheduling system. And as you can see, there are a lot of gut-level stuff being provided by the Bevy engine for you. So it should make making your actual game and organizing your game code a simple enough task. And again, we're still in the release notes section about the whole scheduling change. That's why I'm not reading through it uh, in that case, because there's a lot there. So they've made a lot of changes to their scheduling system. Now in terms of the eye candy side of things, they added cascading shadow maps. Um, cascading shadow maps basically uh, kind of work a little bit like MIP maps. As you get closer, it, the, it will cascade in a new shadow, uh, so you don't get these weird crawling on the edges as you move closer and farther away from shadows. Uh, the Godot engine just added cascading shadow map support as well. Uh, environment map lighting, um, so that's basically a way of, you know, lighting an entire scene. Um, and here you can see there's all, uh, PBR materials look like uh, with environment maps, and without environment maps. So it definitely lights up the scene. And you see here, you're getting reflections from those environment maps. If you're using Blender, you've seen environment maps in action. They're pretty commonly supported, and now they're supported in Bevy. Uh, we got depth and normal pre-pass. Let's see the effects of this. So it's being used to create uh, this special effect here. Find the intersection between the ground and the force field is what's going on with this. So that is new functionality in place here. We've got shadow mapping using pre-pass shaders. Uh, so previously, shaders for shadow maps was hard-coded with no knowledge of material, only meshes. So now the material's depth pre-pass shader are used for shadow mapping. This means shaders used to be do the shadow mapping for material are customizable, used to do, not used to do. Um, smooth skeletal animation transitions. So here you see going from battle cry running to attacking and transitioning between the different states smoothly. Uh, so the animation system was actually only added, I think, last release or possibly the release before so you've got this new play with transition functionality for obviously blending between your various different animations we have improvements to the android support uh, again i'm not getting into the particular details there uh, bloom was revamped so um in 
0.9 bevies bloom looked like this, and they've they've switched out, and definitely uh, an improvement in, in the bloom, in my humble opinion. Uh, so we got distance and atmospheric fog, so you can now render distance and atmospheric fog effects, bringing a new heightened sense of depth and ambience to your scene, uh, and then a lot of detail about exactly how that works. Uh, so there's the standard material blend modes, is what we saw in action in that demo earlier on. Um, and you, you could see how that was actually being used there. We got a bunch of tone mapping changes, including one of my favorite names ever. So if you've done um, Godot development, you've got uh, Filmic and Aces and Reinhardt in there. Uh, these are just basically ways of lighting the scene. They're standard ways of lighting a scene so that things look consistent. Uh, you have the Reinhardt method now, Reinhardt Luminance, Aces Fitted, uh, AGX, the Somewhat Boring Display Transform, the Tony McMap face, which I imagine is a reference to the McBoat face, that that was a hilarious story in the past. Uh, we got Blender's filmic style, and then we've also got color grading controls. So other than post tone mapping, I added some basic control over color grading, such as exposure, gamma, pre tone map saturation, and post tone map saturation there. Uh, so you can see the effect of cranking up the exposure right there. Uh, parallel pipelined rendering. Uh, and we've got a Windows as entities. In previous version, Windows was represented as an ECS resource. In Bevy, Windows is now a component, and therefore Windows are represented as entities. Uh, optimizations to the renderer, um, parallelized transform propagation and animation kinematics, ECS optimizations, sysparam improvements, deferred world mutations. Uh, you can send a command. It does not mutate the world right away. Command gets stored in the system and applied later in the schedule. Deferring mutations in this way has a few benefits. Minimizing world access, uh, other independence, and structural mutations there. Uh, ref of type T queries, cubic curves. Curves. <laughs> I can't speak today. Access kit integration into the Bevy UI. Uh, spatial audio. Um, and then custom audio sources are in there, shader depth values, and so on and so forth. So how far close to the bottom of this are we? Because there's more and more. They added the cylinder shape. Uh, they added a plane shape, a subdivided plane shape. Uh, camera output modes, configure visible components, and on and on it goes. Plus they upgraded to WGPO um, 0.15. It's the underlying library that they're using. Uh, it's their abstraction graphics layer. And like I said earlier on, they enabled OpenGL as the back end. So if you don't support Vulkan, uh, it will fall back to OpenGL support. Uh, support for non-uniform indexing uh, bindlessly. Uh, game APIs were improved. Input method editor support or IME uh, reflection paths and ooms and tuples, and on and on and on it goes. So again, there's a lot in this particular release. Now we're, we're kind of really getting into the weeds here. Uh, there's now a pixel perfect example. So if you're working on 2D and you want to get that um, pixel perfect thing going, uh, you want you want to recreate the retro sprite look, for example, uh, you can now do so with your chunky pixels. Uh, new UI text layout. Uh, and other improvements, and then a look at what they're going to do in the future. Things such as temporal anti-aliasing, and then here, this is probably the most interesting thing, is they're going to start shifting the focus to the editor. So the core is getting more and more complete, so now they're going to start looking at building tooling on top. And I think that's when, once there is out-of-the-box tooling, I think that's when the engine could really take off, to be honest. So a lot of contributors to this project, a lot here to like, and then the full details are here. Uh, all of the change requests that went into this release, pretty big release on the whole. I actually kind of, again, wish they just got called it a 1.0 release because the 0 0.10 just looks like it's so early in its lifespan. 0 0.9 looked like it was much further along. Never liked that numbering system. But if you're interested, again, completely open source. Getting started with Bevy is about as trivial as it gets. Basically, just clone the code down, run cargo run in that uh, folder. And it, it grabs all the dependencies, everything you need to get things up and going. Uh, very nice in that regard. Uh, they've got a ton of examples out of the box. So you can see here in the examples folder. So we got examples for 2D, examples for 3D, examples for... Here, let's show that new UI layer. So there's a new... Uh, what is it, text layouts maybe? I'm not sure if that's the completely new one or not. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and run that, basically just fire up command prompt here. Clone the... So git, clone, and then their repository right here, and then change into it, like so, and then just cargo run, and then example, and then we'll do text underscore layout as an example of an example to run. This will automatically pull in all the dependencies. As you can see, I've already pulled in 309 of them. Uh, so there, boom, and that's it. That's all it takes to get up and running. That's one of the really nice things with Rust. Very simple to work with. So this is their new um, layout uh, 
I don't know if this actually, I don't know what the demo is demoing on the whole, uh, but they do have the new UI layout demo is what we just saw in action there. But there is uh, an absolute ton of examples to get you up and going. They also have a good book uh, that'll actually walk you through how to, um, to, to use Bevy in general. And it's interesting to hear that Bevy is moving towards uh, the tooling on the, one point, on the 0 0.1 one release and i think that's going to be a big deal for them so if you're into rust game development and you are looking for a game engine to use uh, again if i decide to check out rust seriously it's going to be bevy that i do it with there's nothing against uh firerox and then there's earlier solutions such as amethyst etc that they were just so confusingly over engineered i like that with bevy bevy does a lot for you such as like the ecs system the scheduling systems and the renderer and all that stuff uh but it doesn't do it in a way that makes you go what the hell am i reading because i I find sometimes Rust programmers try to be clever for clever's sake, and it makes for APIs that are just confusing as hell. I find even not knowing Rust, uh, when I look at Bevy code, it's just super simple and easy to understand. So bra bravo to them on that. Uh, and uh, yeah, Bevy 0.10 released. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.